Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as you know, I'm always scouring the globe, trying to get the top 0.1% distinctions, insights from the very best, brightest people on the margins, cutting edge, doing fascinating things. So today I have Troy Holt, and he is the chief encouragement officer, which I find very fascinating that in this day, there's like chief technology, there's chief so many different, but uh, how people label and call themselves. So today's going to be talking all about financial education, relationship marketing, and success in today. So he's also a podcast host of Troy Talks. And yes. with that, we'll welcome Troy to the show. Chris, hey, again, thank you for the opportunity, you know, to Thank you for reaching out, you know, and just extending the invitation to come and be a part. Uh, for those that don't know this, listen in among card match. Chris is the number four host on a, a podcast. See, Chris, you didn't think I did that research. <laughs> uh, but but I'm truly grateful and truly honored to be a part of this uh, podcast. Uh, and it's a unique uh, thing for us podcasters. You know, we're just out here. We're trying to make a difference and trying to make an impact and bringing on guests you know, to share their insights, their expertise, and their experience to help people, you know, in whatever uh, arena that it is. So again, thank you, uh, Chris. Yeah, tell people about your um, your backstory, how you sure. got started, and we'll go from there. So uh, Chris mentioned about my, my title. So I own a company called Troy Hope Consulting, and I'm the CEO. The CEO stands for Chief Encouragement Officer. My title is my personality. I am truly uh, an encourager uh, person. I'm always encouraging and supporting others. So, so, so that's where my title came from. But also, I'm a certified financial educator. Uh, I'm on a mission to help eliminate financial literacy, especially in America. Uh, I work mostly with individuals, but also with some businesses. Uh, but there's a lot of people in here, especially middle class America, who uh, just haven't been educated, you know, on simple, simple, simple money tips and, and education. And it's just out, I'm just out here just trying to make an impact, not just an income, but an imp impact, not just make, trying to have revenue, but relationships over revenue, people over profits and impact over income. Mm, I love that. I love that uh, impact and meaning, yeah. you know, today's society, for lack of a better term, it's just all about greed and you know sure. consumption and you know who has the biggest fanciest whatever you know when it boils down to it, is making a difference and yeah so one thing is um finances are a big thing and you see yeah. you talk about this biggest financial crisis mm -hmm. in the u.s you know aside from the bank failures this year what is, what is your thoughts on you know i want to hear from your perspective yeah i think you know the, the banking it, there's so many uh areas the banking crisis was big uh but you know statistics says is uh, i think the number says 39 percent of americans don't have to cover a 400 dollars emergency mm. and and that's really huge yeah. uh, emergency is going to happen you know they're, they're going to come it's just a part of life Mm -hmm. uh, and, and just that one statistic and then, you know, and then the other statistic, debt and student loan debt, you know, is a huge factor. Mm -hmm. Me being an African-American, the numbers are even worse, you know. Yeah. And so for as a minority, the, you know, those numbers are, are, are truly even uh, huge. And so mm -hmm. for me is is it's just trying to help people. If I can just help one, you know, when I educate and a light bulb come on, you know, I get excited about that, you know, because. Hey, I'm helping somebody reach toward generational wealth, reaching toward a financial goal. And so we just need more people out there that really care and really want to help people, you know, to to improve their their financial situation. Yeah. So it's so interesting because, you know, we talk about like I said, we talk about these, um, you know, there was 08 and then there's basically our financial system is extremely fragile and stable. Yeah. But but what it boils down to is a uh, lack of financial literacy, Correct. financial education. and it's never been taught in schools, which I don't really understand why. Correct. And um, so, you know, for the audience out there, it's extremely important, basic understanding of mm -hmm. debt and all this. So what is your number one financial book for 2020, 2021, or the best one you've read so far? So there's a few. So one of them is, is we have a book, and I'm not the author of a book, but we have a book called How Money Works. Mm. Uh, the book uh, is educational and entertaining. 
So the book is designed that even a middle schooler could pick the book up and read it and understand basic com concepts. So it, it teaches concept, uh, the rule of 72. Uh, it teaches uh, those type of strategies and, and concepts uh, to uh, allow people to, to be educated because people say, I've never, he never heard of that. Another book I really like is The Psychology of Money. Uh, mm. It's a it's a book uh, that uh, I'm and I hadn't finished it because I'm reading multiple books, so I hadn't finished it. But it, it's a great book that, that deals with the psychological side of money. Uh, I also like uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad that gives people a, a mindset of you know the difference between uh, uh, systems, business, self employed, employee, and you know just kind of uh, help. Uh, you know, people to to navigate that because, you know, COVID taught most Americans that you should have more than one stream of income. Uh, yeah. and, and, and so I think that's what we got to give a person, give people's mindset. There's nothing wrong with being a W-2 employee. Everybody can't be, can't, can't be a business owner. And mm. so so there's nothing wrong with being a W-2 employee. But at the, at the same time, you may want to have an additional stream of income in case something happened to that W-2 income uh, to be able to fall back on. So, so those are a few books uh, I can think of right now at the top of my head. Those would be some some books that I would recommend. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that. Um, you know, all those titles are thin, especially yeah. the psychology of money. That's yeah. really an interesting. Being more strategic. Uh, the other thing is, um, you talk about. Oh, so taxes are a huge thing. You know, our, mm -hmm. our national debt. They're inflating. They're printing away money, devaluing it, and they're basically raising taxes on the peoples to cover for their mistakes while they right. profit. Yeah. So what is the one of the most underutilized vehicles to legally, legally avoid mm -hmm. taxes? <laughs> I think the one of the most underutilized and, and least educated is people using. So well, well, let me, for the audience, there's three buckets of taxes. There's tax now, which is, uh, uh, income, W-2, capital gains, then, or, or if you have mutual funds and stocks, you, you get tax on that. And then there's a uh, tax later. That's your 401k, 403b. Those are your, your tax uh, uh, later when you begin to make distribution. And then the, mm. the tax never is the bucket that most people underutilize, which is your Roth IRA and also cash value life insurance. Those, I think, are some of the most underutilized and not known that people do, really do not take advantage of Vanito. Because the thing with taxes is, uh, originally, uh, Chris, I started years ago with American Express Financial Advisors, and we had what we call the tax tax control triangle. And, and what, that was one of the things that they, they taught us that would derail a financial plan. And they also mentioned you know, things like disability, but also it was taxes and, and inflation. And if we can minimize, like I said, Chris, legally, it's we can legally minimize taxes. And one of those rules is uh, the IRS code 77. It's a code that allows you to put money in a cash value life insurance policy to be able to uh, uh, have distribution that's tax free. And I, so I think I think that's the biggest thing that's underutilized, this myth that people don't is not educated. Now, I will say this, too, with many people that I've dealt with, there's education and then we got to move from education to implementation. Many people get the education, but they won't get the implementation. So we got to move them from not only education to also implementation. Mm. Yeah, I love that. And it's all about financial freedom, financial inclusion. Some yeah. people don't even have access to bank accounts. Our financial system just very old and very exclusionary. Correct. Um, just designed to help the top 1%. So, you know, you, we talk about equality particularly among marginalized communities, mm -hmm. but there's also, um, you know, there's gender disparity too. So Correct. talk about, talk about that as well. Sure. So first of all, in America, this is, you know, this is a passion of mine, the, the gender disparity and also uh, minority disparity. So in America, mm -hmm. for, and I'm, I'm speaking from an African-American's point of view. So in America, the medium net worth for a white male, so a white family is 189,000. For a black family, it's 24,000. And I did not make any mistakes with those numbers. So that's a big gap. Now, if it's a single black female household, it's only 7,000. So, mm. so that's an even a bigger gap. Now, in America, for every dollar that a white male makes, a white female makes 82 cents on the dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, but a, a black female makes 68 cents on, on the high end, 58 cents on the low end. Now, in America, black women are some of the most educated women in America. 
but they cover they cut they carry the most student loan debt, but also they get paid the least. So it's a big gap, you know. When first of all, for every dollar, women in general, excluding white women, it's eighty two cent. And many women can do the same job, and sometimes the job is better than men, but they don't get paid. There's, there's a gap now. You go, now you have people dispute it; they'll argue with you. But there's documentation out there to show that women do not get paid uh, as much as men. Now, there's some factors. The reason why that number one, w- women tend to take off from their jobs to take care of children or take care of loved ones. Uh, you know, mm. it's usually the woman. So, so during that time, they're missing missing out. The biggest demographics of poor is are women. Why? Because women live longer than men. Uh, so they end up live, living longer than men. And sometimes they do not always get into the financial planning process. They just leave it to the man. And so mm-hmm. these are some factors that's, that's huge. And, uh, and also statistics show uh, that women don't many times negotiate salaries. They take what's given to them because they don't feel like they deserve more. Whereas a man, he'll go in and, ne- and negotiate more of a salary uh, starting now or when it's time to be able to get a raise. So so those are some of the factors why th- it, those gaps exist. So well said. And like I said, you know, traditionally it's been a certain gender, a certain, mm-hmm. certain race that has always controlled everything. Uh, you know, it's up to us to kind of s- dispense awareness, information. Correct. And, uh, you know, fight for, for equal opportunities. And, and, and Chris, to that point, we shouldn't what i try to explain to people is these things exist you want to be aware but don't let it hinder you don't let it be a crutch don't let it be an excuse a plan and move forward even though you have these obstacles to overcome yeah yeah i love that um yeah i I read a recent quote was like the uh the the top people they under like the the bottom people they complain about the game they engage in this victimhood and Mm -hmm. then the top people they understand the game Mm -hmm. and they play by the rules and they basically use the game to get ahead. So that's where we want to. You need to find me that quote and send it to me, please. Send me, find that quote and send it to me. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Definitely. It's a, it's a fascinating quote. It's just like, you know, get smarter, um, use the game to your advantage and don't complain. So. Correct. And that's, and that's that's just about (laughs) anything. Learn the game, learn how to play it. And then once you learn the game, learn how to play it, uh, do it better than your opponent. And then yeah. you can come out on top. You know, that's, yeah, exactly. that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I uh, love this conversation. And, um, you know, as we get more empowerment um, and we get more success, how can people contact you and follow you and, um, you know, reach out sure. to you? Yeah. So there's, there's two main places they can reach me. They can reach me at my website. It's troyhope.com. That's T-O-Y.com. That's my name, troyhope.com. Also on LinkedIn, I'm very active on LinkedIn. So if you so if you reach out to me on LinkedIn, uh, I think now I'm at about fifteen thousand followers, and so I'm very active. I post on there almost daily, uh, and very hard and active on LinkedIn. So those are the two main places. I'm I'm just about on every platform, but those are the two main places to connect. Yeah, and so um, yeah, great conversation uh, for all the audience out there listening. Really. Um, Take these ideas and strategies, use them to your advantage. Don't let society put you in the victimhood. Uh, sure. Use them to your advantage. And um, all of Troy's resources will be in the links and show notes. And with that, thanks so much for coming onto the podcast. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.